Good morning, Bridge Nation. Welcome to the public eye. I'm Ronald Thwaites. This is Bridge 99 FM. With me is the Honorable Pernal Charles Sr. Today we co-host this program. Today, April 10th, 20th. Our hearts are with the family of that elderly woman and her granddaughter who were swept away in the floods of St. James yesterday. We know that it's not just our hearts, but every Jamaican anywhere in the world will be so sad that that could happen. Sad, the tragedies, sad. yes. The tragedies that surround our weekly edition. One of the things we do, you know, because we're linking with you in the diaspora, is to give you some kind of, of viewpoint into the news of the country since we were last here. We're going to be doing it all the more. I'm told that Pernell and I are going to be broadcasting, particularly to a United Kingdom audience, on a Sunday afternoon, week after next, and going forward. That'll be good. Heavy rains in the parish of St. James have caused the flooding, not only there, in the Chief's Parish of St. Thomas, adopted parish. Yeah, we have had. And in Portland, too. Not as heavy as no. St. James. Yes. And, that, and probably you know, uh, Portland and, and I think there are two or three parishes. Yes, yes, we had heavy rains in the Blue Mountains yesterday too. Yes, which indicates a, a, an uncertain weather. Uh, it's it's more than the May rains, and it's not even May yet. Um, and of course, it's early for the hurricane season, and we hope for the best. The trough. The remains over the island for the next week, we're told, and we're urging everybody to be extremely careful. Every Wednesday on the public eye, we bring the issue straight to you. No slander, no gossip, just facts, hard analysis, as we continue to explore the societal problems and challenges and, and very importantly, the opportunities with an open mind to seek find, and find solutions. Bridge Nation, 99 FM. 1.13579 and live streaming www.thebridge99fm.com wherever you are in the world. In other words, you can look on us as well as you can hear us. Eh? Yes. That's, that's the <coughs> magic of technology in this particular instance. In our show today, occupational physician and clinical toxicologist at the University of the West Indies, frequent voice on Jamaica's media, uh, Professor Alverson Bailey joins us to discuss the implications of lifting the mask mandates as reports of coronavirus spike in other parts of the world, particularly in Asia and Europe. And in the global connection, son of the soil and leader in the Jamaican diaspora, Dr. Basil Michael Jr., distinguished lecturer and director of public policy, Roosevelt House Public Policy Institute at Hunter College in at the City University of New York, and lecturer at Columbia, joins us for another riveting diaspora discussion. Stay tuned. We'll be joining with Ari ba- Jam later. We'd love to hear from you. You can call us at 876-676-4996 and <clears throat> from the tri-state area, 1-888-546-8742. Four two, so Mr. P, tell me now, <coughs> Jamaica is uh, still trying to find its contradictory way out of its linkages with the Queen and the United Kingdom. Uh, are you in favor of this, and w- w- how do you see the process taking place? Well, <coughs> I am probably one of the only political science student yeah. who believe you're not going to see that. In our lifetime, what? I why do I say somebody is asking what do you mean by that? Simple. Exactly. I felt that's <clears throat> Norman Manley, who was given the legal responsibility around the table. Either couldn't or did not do what should have been done before Bustamante and Norman Manley signed. At that stage, Jamaica could have become a republic. Sure. They didn't. Hmm. They turned to make a constitution that make it almost impossible. Mm-hmm. Why, do you think, why do you think they did that? Um, why, do you, why do you lay it at the feet I, of Norman I think Manley? That, I think that at that time, becoming, getting independence was the greatest thing. In other words, the separation was, they, they did not need a separation. Anyway, anyway, you get, you get, anyway they were giving it to you, you take it. Well, not that. <clears throat> What you got that time was great mm-hmm. because you are now independent mm-hmm. within the Commonwealth. Mm-hmm. Which means but what? you could have been a republic in the Commonwealth too. Sure. But 
What I'm concerned about is that what is put in the Jamaica Constitution mm -hmm. to make us overcome, to become a republic, mm -hmm. is almost impossible. You're speaking about... I tell you why. I tell you why. The Jamaica pub, the Jamaican voter, the upper class, the rich class, the middle class, are more interested in government rather than political party. Yes. And so what they have done, are, are doing, is make sure that there is a democracy where you have at least two parties, and they fund them. Some people give the JLP 50% and the PNP 50%. They are not concerned about who win, because who win, they are also in control. They win. Follow me, it's like the civil servants. Whoever win, they welcome you, because they win. No, the point that they're making is... And who lose? The point that they're making, <laughs> <laughs> making is because uh -huh. they say you have to have a referendum Yes. And you have to have a percentage of those who vote. Uh -huh. And because since of late, governments in Jamaica are elected with almost less than 50% of the popular uh, the vote on the voters list. Right. Now, if you check what the referendum is asking, uh -huh. is that a certain percentage of the people have to vote? And two uh -huh. and f and and. and a uh, was it two thirds? Depending, depending on what uh, on on the process through the parliament. But what you're pointing out is that it, it is a steep battle for any of the political entities of Jamaica now to to want to take on to achieve. Yeah, because this. because of the ref the referendum. Yeah, but I'm asking you, why was it that way? Do you think? Well, let me tell you. Let me let me go a little further for try and answer your question. Right. I believe that there are one or two Caribbean islands that have already had a similar f constitution like ours yeah. and already voted Saint and Vincent. have been thrown out. St. Vincent. And I will tell you mm -hmm. that because that class that controls the financial aspect of our politics, yeah. I don't believe that they will want to go to a Caribbean court of justice over a British court. Oh, that's a, well, that's a separate issue, but a, a related. No, 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 no. It's, it's, separate, it's, but, but, but related. The, re, the relation is because uh -huh. they don't do that, they're not going to force you to go and vote. Oh. Well, but hold on, Osa. <laughs> then that, that the, if you are right, and there are many who will agree with you, before we take our break uh, in about three, four minutes and bring in our guest. It means, it's a, it, it, in, it infers, it involves a very dismal view of who controls or what, 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 what is the level of true democracy in this country. Well, could you stop right there before you ask a question? Right. Let me put your head back. Yeah. In 1970, yeah. 1980, uh -huh. when one section of the political system was able to say to the other system, you are going wrong. Uh -huh. You are taking us to communism. Uh -huh. and, who is, and who is going to who is going to suffer? The money man. Uh -huh. What did he do? Uh -huh. He created a system, yeah. financial system, yeah. where 80 odd percent of the people of Jamaica voted. Sure. I'm glad you recognize that. Hold now. on, let's go. There's another one. Uh-huh. There's another one. There's another time when you had 60 or 70 percent voted, yeah. you know when? When? I'm going, to, I'm, going, I'm going to give you a little chance to think T about No, that. tell me when. 89? Huh? When? when? 89 or, or when? 89 yeah. when Mr. Manley apologized to the United States, yeah. my word. Well, your words. And said, we are deal. no more socialists. Uh -huh. And the, the same... Money class in Jamaica uh -huh. said to the money class in America, mm -hmm. they are, we are all right now. Yes. So, and and the 70% or 78% voted again. Yeah. Now, what I'm trying to say is that that class of people uh, run the show. only involve when they have a problem. Right. And the other morning I heard a discussion mm -hmm. in which they were saying that the professors mm -hmm. of the United States, from the university, mm -hmm. Uh, professors of 
of, 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 of government yeah. say that that class is not interested in politics. They don't understand. No, they don't. They don't. So I intervened and said, hold on. They are not only involved, uh -huh. understand, they manage it. Yeah. Listen to this. Listen to this, it. Bridge Nation. I've Hold never, on. Yes. They, they said to their workers, uh -huh. they don't go to half a tree or ring bell. No. They don't wear no fancy PNP shirt. No. If they, the closest they get is in, 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 this, in uh, the big place, the shops in the center, to listen. <laughs> yes. But if things not going wrong, uh -huh. they won't vote. Yeah. But Anytime things going right, they believe yes. that the budget uh -huh. is going to overtax them, uh -huh. or that you are coming with something different yes. or another class. They come in and vote. So, the, the, so the, the, just before we break, then the, the if that is so, the the, the 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 ruling class remains different but intact. Um, some would say that that is the, uh, the, class? the ruling class. The ruling class, yes. Define that for me. The ruling class means people with money and power. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Uh, okay. Th yeah. th and whatever they call the color of their skin, it used to be un uh, uh, uniformly white. No, it's not. It's mixed up, but it still has the same characteristics according to your analysis. Yes. Yes. And therefore, and and the more important point f derived from that is that the, the 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 lot, the prospect of the majority of the people, yes, is very dim. Because those people's interests do not coincide with the aspirations of the majority of the Jamaican people. That's obvious. Yes, but let you look at the political system. Do if it quickly at, for me. If you look at some of the answers from the money class, uh -huh. some not going to tell you who they give. Some say they give the PNP 50% mm -hmm. and the JLP 50%. Mm -hmm. They share it. They only come out to vote if there is a suspicion. Yeah that their interest, interest. Uh -huh. is being violated by any Siaga well, or Michael Manley or who? Yes, okay. Well, we have to, we have, we're going to have to pick that Anything apart. Things, anytime things go smoothly, yeah. that, they, that they don't have a problem, yeah. they won't oh, vote, multiple but they terms. will make sure yes. that a government, they don't care which one, yes. is there that do not interfere with, them, interfere their, 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 with their money rights, right. their social rights, the upper class rights. Bridge Nation rest. on the public eye. I've never heard such a searing description, raw analysis of the politics of this country. I'm interested in what you think. I'm interested in where we draw optimism and, and inclusion. And, oh dear, can I use the term equality out of that analysis? That's part of the, 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 the whole grist of what we do on the public eye on the bridge. When we come back, let's look at a, a very important public health matter, the whole directions of, the, of mask wearing, social distancing with Professor Alveston Bailey. Stay tuned. Thanks very much for being on the public eye. This is a Bridge 99. We broadcast to the diaspora. We rate Jamaican people abroad as much as we rate us at home. Thanks for being with us. The Honorable Colonel Charles is a co-host. And we welcome Professor Alveston Bailey of the University of Technology. Hello, Prof. Morning to you. Uh, good morning, Mr. Uh, my title in practice is Associate Prof. Oh, fine. Thank you, Associate Professor. We, we, we sh we'll, we'll syncopate it and shorten it for the purposes. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, Prof, we, we, we want to welcome you as uh, a sister to the university that produced me. So I hope that I am not, I am not uh, dis disrespecting them or causing them any problem. I am a city college. No, this is not the city college man, you know. Well, this is Brooklyn the College. University of Technology. Here. Prof. Bailey, Professor oh, Smythe will come in later. Is that you soon? Oh, you soon be able Jamaican to. You soon be able to to give those congratulations. Yeah. But this one I have a this one I have a problem with. So let me tell him right away. What is the problem? The the name of your university is what, sir? University of Technology. Of Technology. Yeah, Jamaica. And I have, as I was said, tell off my co-host one time uh -huh. that you're not really technology. You're everything. Well, 
Prophet Bailey can't really can't but, really uh, determine uh, that. Uh, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm not saying you, Prof. Yes, but, but the, the I'm looking towards when I, when when we have engineers. You want an MIT, Prof. Bailey, along, uh, alongside uh, Harvard, you know. Leave you leave the teaching <laughs> thing on the lawyer thing <laughs> to the, to the, the others right. and really give us. All right, a, right. I, I agree a with University you. University of but, Technology, but, but, but that is a big subject, Prof. Bailey. We, uh, another big subject today is how Jamaica is coping with the coronavirus and I really need to ask your views on how what you think about the government lifting the mask man mandate and virtually as I look at people on the street and church and and, and <coughs> cinema etc they might go on like COVID done is COVID done? They're no, laughing at not. the government they say it's we it's never it's take no, no injection and say we know if it come out so Prof Okay. Before, before me, you talk, let, you go yeah. ahead. Let, let me respond to that, um, Chief and Mr. Fitz. The, the reality on the ground is that whenever we make decisions, it must be informed by, by, by data, and we need to look at. We're not living in a in a isolated space. We're living in the real world, and therefore we need to look at what's happening in Jamaica and also what's happening around the world. I think the decisions that have been taken have been almost purely being informed by what's happening in Jamaica, which is good in that we have a very low positivity rate of less than 5% now for many weeks. We have very little community spread, therefore. We have a very low hospitalization and very few persons are critical ill and severe ill, and that is good. Yes. So it means, therefore, that for all intents and purposes, the Omicron variant, which had landed in Jamaica in, in, in January, is now essentially gone. However, I need to emphasize this point. The pandemic is not over because the Omicron variant, and this is the only one that has done so, has now evolved into eight different variants. Whoa. And I want to emphasize the point, eight. So they have BA1, BA2, and we have a sub-variant of BA2 called 1, 1, and, and, and 2. Add up to 8. And, and no, not yet. We have BA1 and BA2. And then we have, a, we have a combination of 1 and 2 called XE. And then after we, we look at the we have now a sub-variant of BA2 called BA2.1 and BA2.11. And then yesterday, to my horror, they found in Botswana, South Africa, Belgium, Denmark, and UK, BA3, BA4, and BA5. The take one point I'm making is that this particular virus is evolving, and we I was hoping that Omicron BA1 would have been the last of it, but it has continued to evolve and is now creating problems around the world, especially China, Hong Kong. And I thought I'd just like to point out to the listeners that we cannot compare ourselves with with UK or Canada because their uh, vaccination rate is significantly higher than ours. For example, our vaccination rate today for the whole population is around 26%. But what alarms me most is that the vaccination rate of the elderly is only 17%. Really? And 17% of the elderly, very, very alarming. Now, why am I concerned about that? When the, you had a surge of BA2 in Hong Kong, the primary population that was devastated mm. by the BA2 was the elderly and the unvaccinated. We are in grave danger. We are, and so we need to bear that in mind that, the, uh, that our, population, our vaccination rate is very, very low, especially among the elderly. And what is also very alarming and I would like everyone listening to those polls to understand this. Jamaica has a high burden of hypertension and diabetes. We know that. And, and six out of ten, let me repeat, six out of ten COVID deaths had heart disease. Had heart and, disease? Yes. And four out of ten had diabetes. Uh, uh, that's everybody. 
Six and four make ten. Yes. <laughs> no, but what 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 Prof is saying is that 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 those comorbidities, I think they are called those those right. sickness you have alongside it. When COVID catch you and you either have a a, a, a heart heart problem either side or diabetes. Yes. You're you're, 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 you're like you're, you're likely to die. And therefore, it means that our population, our elderly population, those with hypertension, diabetes, are in grave danger. And therefore, the, my suggestion is that because the virus is, is so prevalent now in the U.S. and in the U.K. and in Europe, that we should really ask our visitors to just give us a test to see if they're okay before they come, because we, our population just can't cope with a face surge. But then... But my, I understand that from our point of view, and that seems a very safe position, and that's a position that I understood has perhaps not in the in the pointed way you have, uh, Professor Bailey, <coughs> uh, put it, but that Minister Tufton and Dr. Bisesa McKenzie and others have been putting it. But then w let us not fool ourselves. The tourism lobby has been saying, to hell with that. Um, we, we, People, people need to come here. We need to revive our business. And um, there's no proof that any of them who have come unvaccinated have caused any, any rash of, of infections. How do you reply? Okay. They have a concern about that. Because when I look at the, at the infection rates that are now taking place, we note that in New York, for example, cases have more than doubled over the past two weeks. Oh. We note we note that, for example, that in the if you look at the data, the nearly half of all European countries have recorded increases in COVID cases in the past week. And Finland has gone about eighty four percent. Eighty four percent. Eighty four. Eighty four percent Finland. Yes. Switzerland 45%, UK, 31%, and Austria, Belgium, France, and Germany have recorded double-digit increase in their weekly tally. Therefore, it means that a large number of Europeans and Americans are coming down with the virus. All I'm saying is that if they land in Jamaica, they might be asymptomatic because most of them are vaccinated. Asymptomatic. But they, they might be asymptomatic. But you can still carry it. But they can. There are distinct possibilities that they can carry it. And because the pandemic is not quite sent in Europe and North America, a large number of the sicknesses will be coming to Jamaica carrying the virus. And they might be asymptomatic. If we had a high vaccination rate in Jamaica, you know, say 70 to 80%, I wouldn't have a problem. But with a low vaccination rate and a very vulnerable elderly population, I'm really concerned that perhaps we should at least ask them to be tested so that at least we can identify those who need to be isolated before they enter. That would, the, mean, uh, that would mean having a, insisting on a vaccine mandate for tourists, enter, for anybody entering the country, as we have had in, mm, the, in the recent past? Not, no, not a vaccine mandate. Uh. All I'm asking is that they be tested so that at least we can be aware okay. of which yes, got you. population okay. yeah. is, 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 is for the risk to us. Yes, got you. Chief Charles, what do you think? I, I have a problem, and it's a political problem. The problem is that I do not believe that the present government, medical team, and others' leadership has emphasized sufficient to the non-vaccine population that you are also still in trouble. I think they're on the streets sh shouting and laughing. See, we have a techno vaccine and then give it up now and we, we, we're not techno truck and we're all right. And as Professor is indicating, the government might find itself in a problem where it has to now go back to all of what it was doing six months ago. And he's going to say, not only vaccine, not only mask, mask mandate, yeah. but lockdown, dance, and this and that. Schools, now, 
I mean, am I am I am I a bad a, a bad talker? No, I'm a realist. Yeah, we're good, man. And I am saying why I don't worry too much about the tourists. Yeah. Most of them, if not all, uh, have to be vaccinated before they come to Jamaica. Not any longer, but most right? of them would have been in perhaps. Most of the tourist workers yeah. are also vaccinated. Oh, I didn't know right? that. The rest of us yeah. are out there saying, we not take no joke. Although we have a big vaccination mark on with yeah. that we took so, vaccine all over. So, so would an argument properly be that if we continue to sanitize our tourist areas and have what these various co co corridors, elegant corridor, etc., that and kept the ordinary Jamaicans away from the vaccinated tourist workers and the 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 probably herd immunized of uh, tourists, would, would would that be a help? undesirable socially as it might be? No, it would be help um, if we actually keep the tourists basically confined to their corridors. Yes. Um, and it would be a tremendous help if all tourist workers are vaccinated. Uh -huh. um, because my main concern is that if they're unvaccinated and they contract the virus, then they're going to take it home. And then we're going to have a ripple effect taking Lord place. Lord have mercy. So well, that is my concern. Yeah. And I do know that there are some tourist workers that are not vaccinated. Yeah. So, Prof, one, one minute. Prof. Yes, sir. Tell me if I'm being stupid. Rani and myself has literally cried tears when we have our children out of school for two years. Mm. We have seen the future gangs. We have seen the future robbers. We have seen everything because we conclude on this program that education is the bridge to everything that is good. Everything. If you are, if you are. So we can't run the risk of, of com compromising this. It is out of poverty. It is education takes out of poverty. Yeah, but so so where does where does where does this no put no? Us? Ronnie, the point I was making is that we are so happy that they're going back to school. Right. Now, if all our children in school are vaccinated. And the parents are not vaccinated. And everybody else are rejoicing. Maybe it's less than 20%. If 80% of our population are not vaccinated, the schools are going to have to lock down again. The, ma the dances, everything going to be locked down. But Why are you going to have a government? Well, well the, the government, the government is, 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 is bent on relaxing. No, um, I share the view of the Gleaner editorial this morning, Professor Bailey, that, that um, Dr. Tufton has been defeated in the cabinet. <laughs> I can't comment on that. You know, I find I can. Charged, what I do you mean? I, he, I, he, I, he, I, well, no, I'm glad I, I didn't read the, the editorial yet. <laughs> but what it is saying is that Tufton didn't want to go this way. No. no I find but Chief but Charles he could, argument, want, could not have wanted to go this way. No. I, I find Chief Charles' argument particularly interesting because he's dovetailing into election given on Friday, looking at the whole question of the relevance of vaccines. Right. Oh. During the pandemic, uh -huh. um, and I send you the link, please, Mr. Chad and, and and Mr. Ted, because basically what I'm arguing is, if we are going to protect, we cannot accept a 25 percent vaccination for the population, and I'm suggesting that we should really encourage, not encourage, make vaccination of children mandatory, so that they so that they can at least be free from illness, yeah. and at least. Um, so, so they, they can at least be free from illness, yeah. and at least they will, they will. It will reduce the possibility sure. of of them spreading the infection to their parents. And that's six hundred thousand uh, uh, um, young men and women, and these are people who you have some control over, and these are people who already are subject to a vaccination mandate in terms of the ju the joke that yeah, Pernell yeah, yeah. keeps reminding us. Everybody got before you everybody could go. That, everybody could go that, grade one. Everybody that enters the school yeah, have to, as you come at the door yeah. first day, they say you have your vaccination paper. Yeah. If you don't have it, you have to so, go back. So uh, we love when we can we can we can put forward practical solutions, you know, Prof. And this is one. This is something that could happen starting pretty well now. The prince is going to if you don't vaccinate, you can't come in. Yes. Let, let's get the children vaccinated. That, yes. that will that will bring us up to almost fifty percent of the population. Major, major step forward. And so the, the herd immunity that we will need in order to 
live with COVID will would be acquired fairly rapidly uh-huh. if our children are vaccinated. Yes. And the other thing I'm insisting, without any apology, is that healthcare workers who are on the front line yes. must be vaccinated to protect them from 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 recurrent surges of this virus, which is in fact going to become a part of our, our normal infection. Um, environment of the, the near future. So, so why and can't these things be made a, a condition of employment, Professor Bailey? I have no idea. I, I will, you don't know, I will tell you. Why? Politics. Well, you know, poli- politics is supposed to serve Rani. public health. Rani. Politics is not supposed to, to, if, to deteriorate public health. If, if the Prime Minister yeah. and the I Minister of Education okay. announced this evening yeah. that all children going to school uh, must enter with a vaccination paper. What would happen? That's if the other side say yes. Yeah. If the other side say no, what happens? Same like what is happening now. Well, then, but, well then the, what we need then, I, again, practical solution. It's, 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 Mark, it's, and, Mark and Andrew better sit down, Prof. Bailey, quick time and decide so them, them, they're going to sing from the same Sankey and that one. Because otherwise, the risks that you have pointed out, the risks that are, 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 are clearly in front of us, are, are obvious and they're, they're ineluctable. Nobody can run away from them. Ronnie, there are some little things that should be done. The musicians, the music is a major part. The dance halls are a major part. If you call in all your musicians and say, look here, man, they're going to love up, they're going to hug up, they're going to dance up. You, mean you, you know, use that as part of okay, your thing. That's a good idea, to too. To say, listen, man, uh-huh. take your vaccination and come. Mm-hmm. Sing a song, no, man. Mm-hmm. Take your vaccination and come. Me come rub up with me. Come me, hug up with me. What a thing. I would be able to get them more money for that. Uh, Prof. Ailey, are you still there? Yes, I'm still here. What, but, I mean, do you agree that, that, that this, these are, if, if Pernell is right, that, that political difference might sabotage this power, this, this, this prospect? And clearly we have, to, we, 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 we have to, to argue for a different kind of politics right now, a more united position on something as, as vital to life as this. Well, I... One of the concerns I have at this point in time is that the pandemic should be a great unifier. The pandemic and, should be a great unifier. Right, yes. And it's, a, it's an opportunity for us all to come together and work as a team. Uh-huh. Together, everyone will achieve more. This individuality cannot work. We need to recognize the risks we face and use our collective wisdom to uh, to devise solutions to solve it. Yes. We can't we can't run away from problems. We have to solve problems. Yes. And the the alternatives and the options are they are very clearly obvious and we must act in the best interest of the society, not in the best interest of ourselves. And just do what is necessary. And um, vaccination of children is critical right. to ensure that the healthcare workers are vaccinated is healthcare critical. Second. And and in, in particular, we cannot let people be of the opinion that the, the elderly and the vulnerable are out of the woods. They're not. Yeah. And so all I'm suggesting is that mass three, wearing three very should, practical be, things should, should, be, be, should be encouraged yes. in for, the elderly sure. in order to protect them. Well, you, Pro- uh, Professor, let me ask you. Last question. Go ahead. Why should Dr. Tufton, I'm sorry for him, <laughs> why should Dr. Tufton be saddled with a group of doctors and nurses who are treating people who are sick with the virus and they are not vaccinated. My response to that is very You simple. tell me. Yeah. Why no, should my money... Simple. He's telling you, you the answer. Be, you Go should ahead. not be they must be. They must be mandated to get vaccinated because when they become ill, we as a country will have to yeah. be the consequence. So if you don't, and, and if you don't, if you don't, then what you're opening the door to is the, 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 the healthcare worker or any other category saying, I exercise my human rights and I don't care what the hell disease I'm incubating. Um, my, and I go on home. My, my terms of employment mean that I ca- you can't force me. Yes. Or, I'm, or if I go home, you have to pay me. Yes. That, is, that is absolute nonsense. And that is the mental deceit that we are wreaking upon ourselves right now. Prof yes. Bailey, thank you for the expert advice. Yes. Sir. Always, always available to you. Thanks again. Thank you, Prof. Thank you very much, Ronnie, Happily. all of that. Good. Send us that link, please, for your, de- your yeah. lecture.
Good. No problem. Professor Alverson Bailey, the Associate Professor of Public Health and, I think, Toxicology at the University of Technology. Clear position. Three things we're recommending to our people in the diaspora, to yes. our, our government respectfully, as yes. well as local. One, in extend the vaccination requirement for children in school. No. Yes. Two. Mandatory. Yes. Similarly, for the healthcare workers, yes. have to, to, to deal with that. And yes. thirdly, make a special effort to increase the level of vaccination among the elderly, the ones with the comorbidities. Co- that, that is key. Yes. Ronnie, I took my three, and if another one come, I'm taking it same, fast. Same as me, sir. Um, this year, I'm 86. May I follow back here? I'm not right? there yet. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you follow back on me. <laughs> that is the... That is the, yeah. that, that is the Crossing of the bridge back to our exactly, colleagues exactly. in the desk. So let's strengthen everybody's hand in that regard and just talk it straight. This is the public eye on the bridge 99. We'll soon come back. This is the public eye on the bridge 99 FM. After morning caller. Hello. How Hello. are you? Um, well enough. Thanks. Um, nice to hear from you. Okay, good. You know, you know. <laughs> uh, I listen to what your your party there talking about. Uh, there they are. Morning, Mr. Charles. <laughs> morning, sir. Morning. Yeah, yeah. Your party, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the subway jump or the coal cut. Which one? <laughs> no, no. You don't need. You can't take that now. Okay, you're not beat me. What? No, you can't take that now. You uh, can't take we that have now. To speak uh, it. And don't let me go back too far, because what what part of what I heard you talking about is the past. And what we want to hear from you is to do now for the future that wasn't done Which when like the what? opportunity was there or, or it wasn't seen at the time. You mean like or, the vaccination? It wasn't a priority. You mean like you the vaccination mean? people? No, about the Commonwealth and, and about um, uh, the status, the status of the, the, the country. Oop. What, the Commonwealth? What, what is your thought what is, about oh, that? No, 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 no. Before oh, I go the Commonwealth, Commonwealth you're talking. I'm, oh, oh, go ahead. Let's hear no, you. A, a, about being a republic. Uh-huh. Or taking the opportunity to move to a yes. republic. Yes. Having got independence. Yes. Because if you look back, is that many other countries have not got independence before us. Mm-hmm. Started out um, without Be, the, um, being dominions. The dominions, yeah. and then they move. Right. Particularly those who aren't, uh, you know, the original ones. Uh huh. Those who came out of that, that type of independence. Yeah. So that's the name of the game. We just weren't smart enough. No, but I. I do not thinking fine. But, but let, me, let me put it to you. I'm. I'm I remember studying the, 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 the popular press at the time and reading the papers to do with the constitutional formation, the background. And I remember the mood at the time. And part of the reason why we tied up ourselves in the way that Pernell was describing earlier was because we were beholden to a a set of social forces in Jamaica who were absolutely clear that they wanted independence because it it was almost being being pressed on us, but they wanted to, to, to... retain the culture, the institutions, and what they saw as being the hegemony of of of, of the colonial power. That was it. There were people in yeah, my family right. who who left Jamaica at the time of independence celebrations, you know, because they were afraid <laughs> of the Black Holocaust. Yeah. Well, uh, let, me, let me just add one other point. On let, let me add one point to that. Propaganda. Right now, yeah. if you take a poll, yeah. more than 30% of the people say they prefer them was with the Queen. The yes. last yeah. poll show. Yes, it, it was the so. The last poll show, so, and it's 60 years so what, from so, then. So why? I don't, I don't doubt you, Pernell. But yeah. why? But why? Tell us why. Because of lack of political education and lack of historical matters. If, if they are back from... You're correct. Oh, so I'm not wrong then. Three centuries ago. Uh-huh. They don't, we don't know. I went to good school, and I read, I read, and know what I know yeah, but, but, about but, what really it is but, what, or what it was. But, Mr. Jigsaw, if people... Mm-hmm. Have the, have put have an alternative put to them in this poll that Pernell is referring us to you and he, if they have mm-hmm. a if, if they have a choice between uh, perpetually warring tribes as they have been as, as we have been called yes mm-hmm. and yeah, and, well, that, and, and the and the stability of the of, as they see it wrongly but 
but as they see it, perceptively, of the British uh, monarchy, then that's what they choose. But it is, it, it, w w what concerns me is that that being the case, we are not repairing that breach as quickly as we should. Yes, we have no. We have. Well, but listen, if we you if repaired. you just re if you just relate it to the earlier interview with Professor Bailey yes. on these life giving issues to do with the coronavirus, yes, and you put it clearly that there has to be a, b b what did he say? C the pandemic should be a unifying force. We have had one Jamaica House meeting in the last three four months. It was said to have gone well. Where are the remaining ones? What is to prevent honor, most honorable Andrew Holness calling up Mark Golding and saying, listen here, we have three priorities. <clears throat> One, we, we must get the children vaccinated. Please ensure me of your support. Two, the health workers must also be vaccinated because it's, it's an absolute contempt and contradiction that they could be treating people while they're, they're themselves exposing them, others, to, to it. And thirdly, we have to move the elderly people's vaccination up from 27 or 17%, which is what Professor Bailey puts it at, to 57%. What is to prevent that happening on this day of grace, 20th of April? No, because uh, yes. uh, some people think a particular one side that they they can manage all the information or, or ideas. Yeah, and and to do that, you need to take it industry by industry. You know that we're in a new regime or a new protocol. You take it industry by industry and let them manage it rather than a blanket uh, well, mandate. I, well, I don't understand that. That is, I, I'm I'm speaking about a yeah, simple let's... simple human agreement that must be possible among two sensible and I believe patriotic men. What would stop? I that agree with it? you, but 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 don't force it on people. But, Invite them to no, say no, the wisdom but, of it and but, get no, no. We're not talking. We're not move. talking about the, the forcing is another matter. What we're what, yeah. what, but what we're doing is adding to the to the persuasiveness. If people do not sense that there is a melee of discontent and dis, and disagreement from people who preside over state power in this country, <laughs> wouldn't that be right? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll travel with you on that road. What do you mean? I can't let, imagine let, any let, resistance. Let me, let me add one point. Add it. Because this is also of great concern to me. Government. Government is the demonstration of the leadership when you have a crisis. Yeah. Good point. government. Point. So, Good government. So, quad error demonstrandum, as we say in the law. You, what you does cannot, that show now? It does not matter. Yeah. So who, show, show me for, now. Who show, for two you must. So show government me, show, is the leadership that you give. Show me your motion now. You know, you you know, you and, know what is happening. I am old enough, and and I am what what the present situation and the absence of agreement over simple life saving measures is contributing to is it is it is validating the points made negatively by M Wilmot Perkins for so many years seeping into the consciousness of the people of Jamaica that the politics is a major pathology of the Jamaican progress no and and f for us after you 40 odd years me 20 odd years in politics yes to have this validated where you can't get away from it where you Pernell have to say that is the politics preventing whether it is the agreement on a referendum or even the partial measures that we are talking about now that could make a difference, yes, and, and help us to revive life and economy. What the I hell will is also, this? I will also tell you without any apology. Yes. This is how I feel, yes. and I hope it don't hurt any of my relatives or my thing, right? But I'm telling you this yes. that as far as I am concerned. Yes. What I know about Andrew Honis yeah. is he is very shrewd in doing certain protection. Turn, turn down your radio, Jigsaw. Right? Sorry, let me move back away from you. Uh, but sorry. I will tell you that what is required of we, him... We should go, we should go he has, for... He, he has to if know... It not, if it not help people to live, live better. Leadership. We should go, go Government for. is to show... <laughs> The leadership when you have a crisis. Sir, I don't Pernell know if you. I don't, if, I don't one, know if you know that minute. we have a crisis. I don't know if you know what? we have a crisis. If you don't think we have a crisis, turn to the international. Well, we're coming papers. to that. We're coming to that right after. Jigsaw, last word from you before we have to go. No, I, I said interesting to hear what Colonel had to say early on uh -huh. about the power relationships, right, versus the politics. Very. Uh, 
So it looked like he has crawled out of the constrictor board like yourself. Cross over the bridge. <laughs> I, I'm a cr- you cross the bridge, you know, you know, <laughs> well, you, you better call the owners of the bridge and tell them <laughs> when you look. And, and pay them for Hello, pulling sir. two of us yeah. out of... <laughs> I, I have something else to say out of the Commonwealth. I don't know if that's possible. You don't have the time. We call you again, <laughs> okay. or, or you can call us. Nice for, for, for today. Thanks so much. This Very is good. the public Thank eye you. on the bridge. Yeah. We'll soon come back. Time for the break. Thanks for being with us on The Public Ad. This is The Bridge 99 FM, Colonel Charles and myself. Joining Bo Regard and Ira Jam in New York. Bo, happy Easter after the fact, but still Easter season. Greetings to you and your listeners. Same to you both. Um, happy Easter belated as it is. <laughs> nice man. Thank <laughs> you. Know. You've been listening to us since morning, Bo. Uh, um, no, I was unable to. I was on route here and I was um, uh, actually I, I want to raise an issue with, with you. I normally do, though, but Thank I was you. unable Thank to you. this morning. I want to yes. raise, you an, raise an issue with you both before we invite Dr. Basil Swackley in, in a few minutes. Um, the President Paul Kagame visited Jamaica last week. Yeah. But President Paul G- P- Kagame, was not, uh, there was no time given for him to be questioned by the press. Mm-hmm. I, for one, wanted to know what was P- P- President Kagame's <coughs> role in respect of the terrible massacre that happened in Rwanda some years ago. He was engaged in politics. What role did he play? Why wouldn't he have been, been, been exposed to the press like all leaders are in Jamaica? Secondly, I would really like to ask President K- Kagame, what, what, what part does he have in agreeing with the policy of the British government to send immigrants who, who try to get into Jamaica, black people from North Africa and presumably some from the Caribbean and some who, who pass your way, Bo, and then won't go England, yes, to send them to Rwanda you know, for it's, processing? It's those people they send them to Rwanda? Yes, sir. No, no, no. No, uh, no they're sending people who have left their I- country. Illegal d- b- b- refugees. No, uh, refugees. Yes, sir. Not, but not refugees they send into Jamaica. No, sir. They're sending back people who are yes, migrated there. Yeah, that's so a, it's a different, different thing. Yeah, but but why why would why, why would Kagame agree for 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 people who are fleeing their homeland to try and make a life in England, be sent to 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 his country Rwanda, on the other side of the world or 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 back where back where they come from? You know, understand I, that? I, I would I like bo- to know. I boast a top for one of my African <laughs> colleagues. Yes, and he said about five hundred people going and about four hundred and fifty of them are professionals. Oh they, no! Then the pr- well, I would no, and they are going to get the engineers and the teachers and the no. Well, the we, no, I don't think so because those are the ones which will hug up because they want their economic no, development. No, a lot of them leave because uh-huh. they were not able to practice yeah. their, their, their. So their, they want to go to U- Rwanda to do that. Oh well. Well, I don't. No, no, I'm, not, I'm not so sure about so that. So he said to me, suppose um, suppose five hundred teachers are available to come to Jamaica. Would you take them? Yes. No, but it's a different matter. That that, that if if you are saying that you, that Rwanda is accepting the British no, proposals, no, 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 I, I I don't want to be saying that. No, but you are thinking. I, I'm, I'm suggesting that yes. if you are some saying of these things, that, yes. that they are that they are looking professionals in order to boost their economy and yes. he- helping out Britain, who don't too like black people anyway. Yes. yes, are are then that's a different matter, but that's not how it is. Beauregard, what do you think? You know, it's unfortunate, and we see that same thing happening here in the United States where they're turning back people who are trying to, you know, come into the United States. People from Haiti, um, in the last year, there uh, was um, a big thing happening here in the United well, States. What would Mr. You know, Tr- Mr. Trump say? Mr. Trump said he don't want people from asshole countries. Remember? Yes, I remember that. Right, and that's the man who, mo- who plenty of America won't put back in the power. But um, some of the things that no, took no, place no. Please, last year was under, um, you know, the Biden administration. Say, uh, also. Uh, if them do it too, then a, 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 the same comment. Yeah. yeah. Any no, one no, of them would we're do no it. Par- yeah. We're no partial. Yeah, no partiality. It bothers me when I saw a man on a horse. Yeah. Riding yes. down no, the... migrants at the, at the Rio Grande border. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so... I mean... So, no. So, no. Hear me now. So, so... When B- Boris Johnson can do them kind of thing, yes, and and he has no backlash in England, right? One presumes no, he won't have any backlash because one of the African countries yes. who said they are supporting Russia uh-huh. in Ukraine, yes. I understand they say that all the Ukrainians 
that are, that that are gone to other countries, right? They open the dining room to them. Well, they just still do it. And people in Ethiopia and Tigris fighting, not even food they ever mm -hmm. send here. What a life. And they say, boy, I, I, the world is so... <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. Double standards. Jamaicans have some very strong views. We welcome Professor Basil Smichael Jr. to the public eye on the Bridge 99 in Jamaica and to the world. Morning, Prof. Glad to meet you. Me. Thanks, very, Thanks much. very much. Professor Smichael, 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 our audience oh. today is both in Jamaica and in the tri-state uh, area of, of, of uh, the eastern United States. Tell us about yourself. What are your roots and connections with Jamaica, please? I was one of the first in my immediate family born in the U.S. My parents came from Jamaica in uh, 1970. My mother was a school teacher in Maypen. My father grew up in Maypen, and um, she grew up in Kingston and was and was teaching in Maypen. Uh, from what I understand, there was a train that she could take from Kingston to Maypen uh, uh, <laughs> on Mondays, teach and go back to Kingston on the weekend. Yeah. Um, and she, um, and they both came here in 1970 um, and uh, were in Queens for a period of time, Brooklyn, and then settled in the Bronx, and I was born and raised in New York City, but raised uh, in the Bronx. Uh, my mother is, was a school teacher. She taught here in New York City, uh -huh. uh, public schools, special education for about 30 years. And really? my father retired as a textile worker. Yes, and they both still live in Queens. Um, I was born here, as I said, and was sent to Jamaica when I was a few months old and was baptized at St. Patrick's Anglican Church on Winwood Road in Kingston. No, look and, at that. Uh, stayed, <laughs> uh, stayed for a bit and then came back and have gone back, I won't say every year, but it seems like uh, almost every year. In fact, I was just there for a couple of weeks in early January and will probably be back for a month in July. Um, so, yeah, so um, still very, very close community, close family on the island. My uncle who I talk about often, uh, my uncle Joe, who you might know, Dr. Joseph Paul, who passed away a few years oh, ago. Oh, of course. Uh, yes. My um, goodness. Um, yes, uh, was my was my was my uncle. So I'm still very close. Read to Read gynecology his and family. obstetrics at the University yeah. of West Indies. Yes. Well, and uh, and uh, and a, and a staunch advocate for women's reproductive rights. Um, so a very um, um, some a person who I looked up to uh, quite quite a bit as a child and as an adult. Yes, well, that's very interesting. Um, is, it, is it still blood ties that draws you back to Jamaica? A man like Professor Basil Smackel, who uh, we're, we're, we understand has a, a stellar academic career in the United States and one of public service with former uh, Secretary of State Clinton and others, Governor Cuomo and others in, in New York State. What, 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 what draws you back? Is there something in your soul that, that has a Jamaican sinew attached to it? I think so. I, you know, I, I say often that my, uh, I say often that I'm American, but my soul is Jamaican. And Lovely. So, <laughs> um, yeah, that turn it. <laughs> Man says he's he's American, but his soul is Jamaican. And yes. So, uh, so yes. yes. So yes. I, uh, you know, and and to be honest with you, it, even in my academic and professional career, I've uh relied on so much of my family's teaching my uh, cultural heritage in how i view the world um you, I've, i in fact if anybody asks i always say that in many ways i'm a garveyite really? and uh, talk often about the importance of africans in the diaspora yes. uh, uh uniting banding together and and fighting the uh fighting uh, discrimination, racism, economic inequality all over the world. And imagine what we could accomplish if we were able to do that. The truth sure. is it, it's it's something that I speak on um, uh, daily. Uh, Professor Smeichel, why are you a Democrat mm -hmm. and rather than a Republican in the United States? Great question. Um, you know, I often say that people are drawn to their political parties often by uh, by example. And when I was younger, uh, let's say 12, well, it was 84, so I was 12 years old, 
you know, I saw Reverend Jesse Jackson on TV yes. at the Democratic Convention talking about how the, the Democratic Party needed to be more inclusive. But the fact is that there was an African-American man, a black man, uh, challenging the system. And he ran as a Democrat. Four years later in 88, he did the same thing. One year after that, in 1989, David Dinkins, a Democrat, became the first oh, African-American mayor, mayor of New, York, New City. York City. So I actually was not able to vote at any of those moments. I couldn't even vote for David Dinkins at the time. But yeah. because of those experiences and being able to witness all of this, I, I said, let me join the Democratic Party. I will say, like my caveat, however, is that I... Uh, when uh, I, and I say this all the time, I'm black before I'm a Democrat. And so I really focus on policies that help us as a community and us as a people. There are a lot of things that Democrats might be talking about that I don't necessarily believe. I'll just give you a very quick example. Mm -hmm. um, Bernie Sanders spoke a lot about, you know, or, or is perceived often as being anti-corporate, anti-private sector. And I and and then there's a question as to why a lot of black voters didn't support him. And I said, well, because in the black community, being a corporate leader is important. <laughs> you know, it it provides a sense of economic freedom and helps helps uh, 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 diminish the the wage and wealth gap. Um, and if you were, you know, if you read magazines like Jet Magazine as a child, every aunt and uncle including my Jamaican uncles, had a copy of Jet Magazine on their uh, coffee table. And there was always a section on uh, the, the black leaders that were moving through corporate America and ascending the ranks. So in many ways, those folks are heroes to us because they are in places not previously designed for us. Yeah. But, but... Um, so, to, so there is a so so in, in some ways where the party is going more in that direction, I go in another. So we, I'm a Democrat, but um, I mean, you know, but there are there are other ways in which I, I may see things differently from my party. Is there an ideological commitment among the Democrats? Granted, it's a they're 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 they're, they're a big room. Uh, is there an ide ideological commitment towards more equality than perhaps the Grand Old Party stands for? I, I think there is, and I and I do talk about that. I think that by and large. It is, as you indicated, a big tent party. So we don't, you know, we don't, um, we don't have the "it's my way or the highway" kind of mentality that the GOP does. <laughs> but smile, smile uh, Pernell. <laughs> <laughs> but I do believe, but I do believe um, that the party has not focused enough on what we would call kitchen table issues. That they haven't really focused on wage uh, wage increases that are really important. I think we should be focused on universal health care more so than we have been. I think you can have universal health care, yes. but also still believe in capitalism, you know, which yes. is unfortunately the the trade off that sometimes we we're we're asked to make. Um, you you know, folks don't want to be labeled socialist or communist or what have you. But, you know, other countries have universal health care and the wealthiest country in the world can't. I don't understand that. Um, so I think that the I think the party, generally speaking, and through individual leaders do have a, a, a mandate or feel that they have a mandate to focus on inequality. Uh, unfortunately, the wheels don't turn as quickly as we would want them to. Uh, Professor, can I can, sure. I can I ask you a question? Uh, of course. I think from where you are, many people looking at the PNP and the JLP and say, much, what is much difference? Maybe just leadership. But we look at the Republicans and the Democrats in the United States. What is the great difference between these two parties? Great question, especially for today, because I think the biggest difference is that the Republicans are engaged in a culture war. Um, one of the things that the Trump presidency did was conflate economic nationalism and ethnic nationalism. And so it made voters feel that there was something missing in their lives. And what was missing was largely due to the fact that we've got all this diversity in the country um, and that and that somehow we should be starting to uh, have more of a nationalist uh, view of, of America. Um, that's 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 really the large change in the Republican Party over the last maybe 30 years. 
you had Republicans and Democrats that that differed on efficiency, differed on government spending. But the Trump administration pretty much changed all of that. They spent a lot more than Republicans ever did. Sure. Um, but then blame Democrats for 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 mismanagement or for not understanding how government works, taking care of the so, people. So, right? so they they've changed the norms. Yeah. And they have dram- dramatically changed how our institutions have worked, and that's what's become a bit troubling. But then Prof. Michael, help me with this follow-up, yeah. because if, if given just what you have identified, given its manifestation in all these voting restrictive laws uh, that yes. we're, we're, we're seeing in the, um, the, the, the aftermath uh, of George Floyd and the continuing elements of, of bias law enforcement, um, the locking up of what is it about a quarter of black youth? How can any black man in Jamaica vote vote, vote for Trump uh, in, I mean, in America? America. In America, <laughs> yeah. and, well, and some, and some know, of Trump, and actually, some of the leaders in re- Trump situation are black people. I, I, you know, it's a very interesting it's a very interesting dynamic which I do talk about because in many ways, older African Americans are do have very similar uh, feelings and attitudes towards immigration, for example, as do many conservatives. Because for a lot of older African Americans, particularly African American men, there is a sense that, you know, there was there was there was there was very high unemployment among African Americans broadly, but there's a sense that these newer communities are coming and taking jobs and this sense from the African American community that we've been here a long time we've been here longer than everybody else and still can't really get a foothold into the economy watching so many other groups come in and 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 become successful i the the the, the weird thing is that that's that's just not true um but the problem is that there are so many folks who have conflated that issue with sort of larger cultural issues that those that, that you it's hard to extricate those one from the other and so I found as I was really going through New York State and across the country during 2016 and even in 2020, that there were a lot of African-American voters who felt that immigration was a huge uh, uh, barrier for their economic success. Even, even, quite frankly, children of immigrants that I spoke to, who I have friends who families from Antigua and from Barbados who grew up here, living in the suburbs yeah. and felt very similarly. And I can see why that sort of line of thinking gets transmitted that way. But it's a dangerous line of thinking, going back to what I said before about Garveyism, um, if we all sort of connected around our common our common motherland yeah. um, and our common framework, then we would be able to fight back on those narratives. But but then you see, the, 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 pardon, uh, Prof. Michael, the, it, w- I see a broader... Uh, Issue because that kind of of, of divisiveness, that kind of, uh, of of separateness, the the the, the obsessive individualism that would draw even people who who know that supporting Trump is to support elements of racism, are are just listen to Lindsey Graham and and what's his right. name McConnell and Cruz, yeah, all these people. Um, th- this is what is fueling a lot of. P- Putin's thinking, you know, Prof. Michael, he, sure. he, he's looking at, at, at America with its tremendous military, tremendous social, tremendous philanthropic uh, foundations. And he's saying, look at these people. They are paralyzed by their own divisiveness and their lessons f- for that with Jamaica and lessons w- with, the, with the rise of authoritarianism. We, we, equally from the left and the far left and the far right, anywhere in the every almost everywhere in the world, Prof. Michael made my head or hurt me. Can I can no, I, I know. Have, yes. can I add one point, Professor? <laughs> yeah, sure. Can I add yes, one sir. point? It has been sent to me, and I must expose myself as a political science student from the, the university of, but I'm the city college one. Yeah, sure. Um, I have been advised that. Mm-hmm. The year, the twenty, in another twenty or thirty years, mm-hmm. the concern is that the white American will be a minority in the United yeah. States, and this is a great problem. A, new, a numerical minority. 
No, well, but, but a numerical minority. But, 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 yeah, but they yeah. will go. They will still control. Of course, the the majority of its wealth. And no, and the and the, and the and of its political system with yes. with what they're putting into effect. No. Yeah, but, but, but they they are concerned about the politics. Clearly, to the point where they are but, keeping but, uh, yes. elements of the suppression uh, in place and increasing it. Well, well, from, well, listen, I, Professor, I, I, you're, you're, together, you're at the I table think... and two students are asking the question. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> let me actually tie a couple of those points together because it's really important. I would say that America excels in one thing, and that is self-interest. And so, yes, in, in many ways, what Putin is doing is looking at that, exploiting it among certain groups of our uh, of our of our country, when you have whole cable networks essentially being apologists for for Russia, that's a huge problem. But I, and I also think you're right about the change in the demographics. New York City, for the first time, had a majority minority electorate where, where there were more minority voters than there were white voters, and that is a trend that clearly will continue. It'll clearly continue across the country. And if you look at the races where you have these young black mayors running all over the country, Stacey Adams, Abrams, who's contending for governor of Georgia. What a wonderful woman. Um, there is, absolutely. And, and there is real fear among a lot of white, uh, a, uh, a lot of white Americans. But you can't, but what's interesting is, and, and you talk about sort of controlling, you know, they still have control over the political institutions and so on. That's changing a little bit, but I will tell you one place in which they are succeeding. They are going to the grassroots more, much better than Democrats are. And I say that because if you look at all of these school boards. articles and stories of the school boards, critical yeah, right. race theory, banning books, the problem is that there are over 14,000 school districts in this country, 14,000. Yeah. Yeah. That means there are 14,000 venues for a lot of this organizing to take place. Democrats have not really done that, but, but the conservatives are. And they're using that platform to, to really change how people view history and, 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 and are engaged <clears throat> civically. One other quick point, that we tie this into what's happened with respect to these, these choice laws, but also the voter suppression laws, because during the Obama years, Democrats lost over a thousand legislative seats across the country, state legislative seats Whoa. across the country, which means that in state governments, yes that have been flipped to Republican control, they are now in control of all of those issues like how people go and vote. So there, all of this is connected. It is not disconnected. And yes. I think what Democrats fail to really plan and see ahead in that regard. So can I ask One you? second, Pernell. When we come back from the short break, what's the, uh -huh. what, what's the bomb in Gilead? What's the, what, what's the therapy? We, we worry because when America has these kind of, of, of uh, political epilepsy, Jamaica nears death. <laughs> Professor Basil smacked <laughs> an American Jamaican on the public eye. This is a bridge joining with Ira Jam in New York and soon come back. This is a public air with Pernell Charles and myself. And we're talking Professor Basil Smackle. He is the Jamaican American academic and political uh, commentator, political activist. Prof, help us, no man. There must be some way out of this. Um, my short response is that the youth will save us. Um, <laughs> I think younger people, young voters, young activists today are growing up in a world where they not only have more access to information maybe not wisdom but they have more access to information and are trying to figure out how to use that information to uh, create more equity in 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 in, in the world uh really Let me... uh, i see it i see it in my students they they're really concerned about these issues the well, question the real question for them is you know can we get to them and keep them active before they get uh, before they get turned away from it. Well, this is uh, this is the, the thing I wanted to take you on because yeah. I, I'd be very glad, to, be very glad to hear the, the reaction and viewpoint of your students that you report. But the the concern I have is that many in in, in Generation Z, as you as they're called, mm -hmm. are so obsessed with um, with 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 personal uh, aspirations and achievements that the the notion of of sacrificing for the common good 
um, is is not not paramount. They wouldn't be going to work for Senator Hillary Clinton or the, <laughs> or, or or Governor Cuomo. They would be looking to get a bigger house in Westchester. Well, um, I want one too, by the way. Uh, but the the, uh, the you know the one thing that I I look at um, is if you think about how they engage social media. One thing that social media has done is small d democratize advocacy, where before, you know, in the, particularly due to the civil rights movement, the model was sort of the black preacher led movements where everybody would go to the church or go to your local organization and get your sort of orders about where we're going to be this week, where we're marching, why we're marching, what we're asking for. Um, you don't have that. Religiosity has gone down in our country significantly. Um, and I think younger, so younger people don't go to church like they used to, right? But what they, and they don't belong to organizations like they used to. I'm a Freemason. So where they pick up their values, you, you know, everybody says, my uncle was. So maybe so their uncle was, but they don't. And that, so the, it's, so the, the, the issue is that their values, I think, are a lot more, come from a lot more of a global context than a neighborhood-based context. And what so what that's done is it's really just sort of expanded their their understanding of the world. And my view is that if we channel that appropriately, uh, we can we can get them to stay active and stay engaged, even if they don't think being a Democrat or a Republican is the way to go. And a lot of them don't believe that anymore, that we take whatever it is that they are or however they identify themselves and and put and get them to be more civic minded i think that's all there we just need to be better mentors but you have per, to, per, yeah. per, 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 let me draw yeah, man. I, I have to ask you this can you stand yeah. before a group of young people young professionals what give me an idea give me a little mirror what's their future what what are they looking at what is their ideological what, foundation what, what, they, what are they trying to achieve they want to change the world. They want to change America. No, they want a big I money. Mean, apart from a few, well, I was there. They wanted to find more black students in a, in in New York who could probably come yeah. to school free, you know, because yeah. they were not enough. Yeah. But L let's hear the answer. I do think. I do think. So, so there, 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 are, there's the answer to that question, which I'll get to. The stumbling block to getting to that answer is that Americans believe very firmly in incrementalism. We as a country don't like big change, big all of a sudden change. We like very slow moving change. That's the stumbling block. And what's the challenge is that young people don't like that. They want change today. <laughs> and um, so the key is to get all of what they feel and all of that energy and, and make sure that it's sustained. And what will it be sustained towards? They do care very much about equality and, and, and more um, they, they care about the climate. Um, they don't necessarily, particularly in a time of COVID, necessarily believe in, you know, being in the office every day. So the idea of work has fundamentally changed for oh. them. And we're all still trying to figure that out. Uh -huh. um, but they do feel that there is more of a need for their own talent and being able to identify and present and promote that talent versus being part of something larger. So we're seeing a lot more entrepreneurial spirit from from young people today. And the truth is social media and technology has enabled that. Um, and so the question for us is how do you use that if they're going to be self-promoters? How do we self get them to promote themselves and issues that we think are uniting? I say that in, in part because what I saw when I used to run the state Democratic Party was that a lot of young people were not clearly interested in becoming democrats but mm -hmm. they did care about the issues that we cared about oh. they were forming all of these other organizations to be to mobilize voters and so if we can tap into that right. and do it in a sustained way we can actually create some change uh, i really want to before time runs out on us i'll uh, get a view from you on 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 the jamaican diaspora the we can broaden it to the Caribbean diaspora. Can it play a meaningful role? Are there things that persons like yourself, um, first generation Americans, uh, think of and want your your country um, to to better respond to that would make that connectivity um, all the more sacred? I think the Caribbean community does this already, but I think what's needed in the U.S. context is more of the thinking that I'm about to say, which is that. Um, 
you know, one of the biggest international movements when uh, growing uh, as I was growing up in the 80s and into the early 90s was ending apartheid. And I always said, if you remember that time, Africans across the continent and in the diaspora pushed that issue to the forefront of the minds of world leaders so that we not only had white leaders in European countries focused on it and leaders in America focused on it, we actually marched and got colleges to divest from South Africa until yeah. they ended apartheid. Yeah. And I go back to this original point. Imagine if we did that with, with, with income inequality. Imagine if we did that to push uh, an end to uh, a food or housing insecurity. If we as a collective group could figure out a way to do that. And I think that's the best, one of the best ways the Caribbean community can teach uh, African-Americans here in, in the U.S. The, the, the think more globally as a collective. Professor, quickly for me, I'm probably the last one. You, you, you said something that is bothering me. Okay. If the younger generation or the mm -hmm. newly educated generation is not mm -hmm. interested in big changes, then things are just going to go on like it used to be. One or two well, more black people get into Congress. One or two more send here, send there. Uh, City College getting a few more black students from Harlem. Uh, so therefore, you know, but there's well, no, still I, the problem. Well, well, let me let me say this. <laughs> Listen to this. I, 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 I didn't say. I didn't <laughs> say that they're not interested in big change. I said, yeah, I said the country as a whole doesn't believe in big change. That's why we can't get big things like infrastructure done in a meaningful way or universal health care. But young people do want immediate change. Yeah. We just have to make sure that we make that make their interest in energy sustained because they're going up against uh -huh. a country that is resistant to that. Right. That's the challenge. Well, I think you you, but you Professor, you, need a sacrifice <laughs> for you to get yeah, big know, change. Yeah. You cannot yeah. have a man like Trump yeah. can yeah. pull out a few black people. Yeah. And they're saying yeah. that this is where our future and, is. And, and create a, yeah. cre create a false and create narrative. A false, yeah. Yes. false impression yeah. and yeah. a division. Yes. What, what, for the, last, the last one, Professor. <laughs> yes. Information and finance. To me, uh -huh. we're going to control the future. Information and finance. Information. Uh -huh. More people know what is going on, no, but they want no, to something. also live better. Yeah. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the other philosophies and this and that, right, are going to come behind. Information means education and all. Well, Information that, in itself could be called mm -hmm. education. A man sure. is educated sure. here in Harlem, not going to live there. He going to live up in Winchester. Well, well, Harlem Same like right down now. in Central Kingston or in West Kingston. Yeah. He's going to go up to... So, 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 so well, I'll, I'll just say this really. I'll just say this very quickly. I, I know where you are. Where you talk about City College, I live two miles away. I'm in Washington Heights, and so um, one of the things that's important to me is that when people see me on TV, that I have folks in the street that can say, "Hey, I saw you, and I like what you had to say," yeah, or, or it makes them think that is the most important thing to me. Not can I get that in Westchester County? Yes. But the impact that I have is not there, it's here. And I choose to stay here. And the truth is, I think a lot of younger people are, and the folks that I teach in particular um, in the city university system, they are so focused on returning home, being engaged in the community. Very quick example, the district, the sitting elected district attorney of Brooklyn, Eric Gonzalez, mm -hmm. he and I went to college together, actually. Really? And he is adamant, because he spoke in one of my classes two weeks ago, he said that he still lives in the neighborhood he grew up in, and he does that because the people need to see him. He needs to be aware of who's around him and be able to represent their interests in the work that he does every day. And there are a lot of us that do believe that and, and practice that. So the hope is that we could be, like I said earlier, better mentors to younger people to understand um, that they could do the same and the impact they'll have will be tremendous. Do you think, is there a, any prospect for uh, enhanced interest investment by the by people like yourself in the Caribbean diaspora in investing in in Jamaica. 
Um, well, I just I, I did just buy an apartment there, so that's excellent. My Grateful. Step. <laughs> that's nice, man. <laughs> so that's my little step. Um, a big but step. But I do think that I do I do think that. Yeah. Um, you know, I I think it, you're right. Uh, uh, brother was right that information and finance are going to be incredibly important, right. especially because in this environment, you are the product. Yes. And so, how you market yourself, what you provide um, to the to the sort of ecosystem of finance and mm -hmm. the economy is incredibly important. It's just easier for you to do that individually than it is now than it has ever been. ever been. And and then ever been, and that's critical. And then we can use that and take that. The fact that we can now work from more places around the world sure. uh, because of this, this, this format, mm -hmm. it becomes that much better for, yeah. for us to be able to invest in Jamaica or any yeah, other yeah. place. So there's it. There's optimism, uh, there's, there's good prospect. Yeah. Listen, sir, we own you, you know. You might, you, 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 <laughs> you, you might, you might have been born, born in New York, but, but we, 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 we capture your spirit and we're glad that you, I, you share with us. And you seem, I would, I would you never seem, neglect that. You seem, you seem to have come to Jamaica. Yeah, man, come on well. Uh, I don't know where you're landing, but, but you may have had a little round leaf <laughs> and. Oh, uh, yeah, man, coke and this, bread this countryman, this countryman will will will, will catch you anytime. <laughs> Maypen ancestry, as you speak of, um, the, the idea of the bridge, you know. <clears throat> Yeah. Is, is to is to facilitate these relationships across yeah. all of the all of the divisions. And thank you so much for for being on the bridge with us today. All the I'm, best to you. I'm happy to. All the best. Thank you so Take much. Take care. Okay. Professor Basil Smackle Jr., American Jamaican. You notice I put it that way. Born in America, but he's an American citizen, deeply involved in American politics and, and academia. Doing proud, doing us proud because he says his soul is in Jamaica. Beauregard, where is your soul? Right there in Jamaica, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What, what you thought of that interview? A very good interview. Very interesting. Very informative. Yeah, but I want you, you know. to join in the Democratic Party. <laughs> Who we're, says I'm not? Very good, Ronnie and myself. <laughs> I captured Ronnie by giving him an article. He told me he knew all about it, but he didn't tell me. What was I, that? The question is information which is education well that's what the bridge is doing yes mm -hmm. that's and why we're here that's the purpose of it we are doing a job here uh -huh. that make not only new york and britain and canada uh -huh. but jamaicans we're yeah. traveling yesterday a man said boy we're here and it's something to me never hear it you know <laughs> that's nice. this is in jamaica yeah, it's good. the bridge <laughs> starts here Beauregard, you see gone large <laughs> yes, man. But that's important. But it's 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 critical because the 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 strength and the the potential that is created by drawing on people's talents, people's experiences, sharing the resources across yes. uh, um, right. continents, um, geographical differences, uh, class differences, racial differences. We the capacity to talk to people of entirely different origins than yourself, religious, political, whatever, is, is extremely important to survive in these and very and difficult I circumstances. In? Some of the, and I'm still excited about our friend in London, yes, yes. in Canada, yes, all that, of them. Was, that lady that came on. Sure. I mean, that, that diaspora connection that the bridge has created for us yes. has inspired me yes. that things can be better, will be better, and if more of this could go out, to the people, the, pop yes. the population in Jamaica, yes. be better off. Well, now let's let's talk a little you know, bit more. Go ahead, Bo. No, I was gonna say, um, you know, you mentioned resources and 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 things of that nature. Trying to just make the Jamaican economy a whole lot better in terms of you know trying to make the lifestyles of people in Jamaica much better. Mm -hmm. On a day like today in the United States, where we are celebrating something called 420, which is the freedom of you know smoking marijuana in public. And this being the first one since the pandemic subsided, and it's also the first 420 since the legalization of marijuana for recreational use in the tri-state, uh -huh. which was first done in New Jersey, then Connecticut, then New York City. Yeah. Now, my question is, um, you know, being that we are now able to do this here in about 20-something states in the United States, what is holding up Jamaica as far as utilizing marijuana as one of its resources to rebuild our economy? 
Well, I don't know. Um, it's not. It, uh, it, I I have a, a question. If if you people use the marijuana and it help you, you must tell me how it help you. But I don't want to use anything that tie up my head or make my head feel different or removed from reality. Um, and but if there are people who there, there are supposed to be num number of people who have licenses from Jamaica, or in Jamaica, to process marijuana, to grow it, and to use it for medicinal purposes. Mm -hmm. Nobody's being um, prosecuted now. If, if you come to Jamaica and uh, look around you on the road, you will see taxi man with a spliff in the mouth. After okay. attack you, though, you know, uh -huh. you said that marijuana, uh -huh. my word, was made available Mm -hmm. for medicinal purposes? <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> Where is that? In Jamaica. <laughs> no, no. Where is that written? Where is it written? Yeah. In the law? Ronnie, I, I, I'm going to look it up. I've never seen a madman in Jamaica who never smoked cigarette, ga ganja. Mm. I've seen no, ganja know, smokers who are not <laughs> mad. I know your but position. But I've never seen know. a madman that's not smoked ganja. Bo Beauregard, before the time runs out, yeah. Pernell, Pernell was very critical of me in yes. when we were both in Parliament because mm -hmm. I supported the reform of the dangerous drugs law, which allowed for small quantities of, of ganja and for, mm -hmm. it <coughs> for the penalties to be relaxed. I, right. did, I did so not because I, I smoke ganja or, or approve of that, but because I don't think the law is a proper in, in, uh, instrument to bring about that kind of behavioral change. And my, my history, my professional history is I spent the first three, five years of my practice as a lawyer virtually in court every day trying to prevent people from having to go to prison for a mandatory 18 months because they had more than three, three grain of ganja. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and Pernell did. Go, go ahead. Yeah. And, and you, 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 you were concerned that relaxing the, the law relating to ganja was going to provide an, a, a slackness, an openness, and a danger for people. Danger for particular yeah. our students. Yes, and I accept that. You and, know. And, and, and I'm going to attack you now, Hear me now. because Boring you finally became me. Minister of Education yeah. and had the problem to yeah. face sure. when Be all these young boys are dropping out of school, mm -hmm. heading down to Bellevue? No, well, I w that I I'm not sure how many of those were, but it's certainly the risk was there. My view is that law is a very blunt instrument to achieve social change, and that a law which consistently is, is breached by people, and you have no capacity or no interest to enforce it, is so a bad law. But Ronnie, why is law a law? Why what is law a law if it's not to sh give you a, 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 a wall what, on which you can what, what is, what can is protect not? yourself from. Yeah. So was was the um, the people who were dropping out of school and those going to Bellevue was there a study done or proven to show that it was cause of no. marijuana? No. Okay. okay. No. But well, there, there it's, it is undoubtedly that pe that that some young people misguided felt that this was the way that they could an enhance their brain power, you know? That the, they, 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 they can ascend, bust through any exam, Bo, if only them... Well, them God, I've, I've <laughs> got to attack my co-host. Listen to yes. this one now. Yes. After supporting his government mm -hmm. to let man grow five, like five trees of ganja, and I multiply that yard, each yard could have all a hundred ganja trees. But... Mm -hmm. He came back under my government with Mayor Speaker of the House with a resolution saying we must now take charge of our children and go in to teach them not to be involved in smoking this ganja behind the tank at school. But there's no and there. and <laughs> I, 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 I looked at him and said, I <laughs> warn you. Yeah, yeah, and, it wouldn't <laughs> make, and it wouldn't make me debate it because you can imagine that. Um, and there's no contradiction at all. There are certain things that the law cannot do. Yeah, but Ronnie, I congratulate you though, you know. Yeah. Because to be honest with you, yeah. you had a lot of guts yeah. after all that to put me through. Yeah. And now you come back. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not saying, Pernod, I agree with you, you know, but I tell you what, yeah. my job now is to make sure yeah. that our children yeah. but recognize but the danger. One of the elements of the reform of the law at the time, Beauregard, was that there was going to be a, a, a corollary of a strong education policy so that people be, were, were made aware of what, w what was the likely consequences 
positive negative of of using any kind of psychotropic uh, substance yes Yes. And that never happened, and that was why that was what led to this re resolution that Pernell reminds me of, which he properly suppressed <laughs> during the time he had the power to do I that. Said, what Rene, what, what I are we going? I would, <laughs> Bogart, I wouldn't even listen to his resolution, <laughs> saying exactly what I told him years ago. That years ago. and he now had the job to come to back correct with it. a resolution yes. to correct it. Yes. And well. I say, you know something. My father used to be a district council, and on the wall, him have <laughs> a cough and, <laughs> and a coast guard. <laughs> you know, listen to me now. Uh, let me ask both the final question. So what is happening in our, among our communities in New York? They just use weed freely? Yes, um, those <coughs> people who want to use it. Well, uh, if you're and an adult, it, you have it, to be an adult. And it helped them? Age. It helped them? Yes, it, it, it is helping well, a lot of people. Well, from a long time. Make them feel good? Yeah, from a long time, uh -huh. people have known these things for, for generations and years. No, I don't doubt you, and I'm not, I'm not cussing them, you know. All I'm, yeah. saying, all <laughs> I'm saying is, does it make you more happy? Does it happier? Does it make you more productive? It's, it has its benefits. Um, <coughs> each, each one, each people, or yeah. person, I should say, yeah. you know, have get their own well, benefits. And I, I just will, I'm, I'm not going to, to, to suggest that anybody should be locked up for that. That was draconian and wrong. No, no, but they're, they're, doing what, they're doing what you wanted. What I'm saying is that they must <laughs> educate themselves properly, and that nobody look at the human mind is so precious that you must not do anything to it whether it is alcohol tobacco marijuana opium anything that is going to re reduce your consciousness and make you less of a of a responsible productive individual that's my position well god he was reading he <coughs> is reading a document a revolt wrote this morning <laughs> and he's reading on behalf <laughs> he's reading on behalf of and me on that note, I'm, I'm in full <laughs> agreement with what he has just said and on that note we end <laughs> our public eye <clears throat> and our very happy linkage with ira jam for today Beauregard, thanks and blessings see you next week yes sir Love see you both next week Love and to um, all of your your listeners definitely. and thanks to our guest occupational physician and clinical toxicologist at the University of Technology, Associate Professor Alveson Bailey, and a distinguished lecturer and director of public policy at Hunter College and Columbia University, Dr. Basil Smeichel. Thanks to all the public eye, open mind, bridge nation listeners for tuning in. Thanks to Lafayne Wigan and technical operators, Richie Rainford and today Jeffrey Brown and all of the remaining staff who have done so much to make this program possible. We make way now for Nikki Z and the crossover. Join us again next Wednesday at 11 o'clock for the public eye and the open mind. Take care till then.